Now, we continue our coverage of this Stephen Avery trial with Anjanette Levy, live now with analysis on today's events. Anjanette. Well, good evening, Tom. Uh, our legal analyst, Rob Bellin of Hammett Bellin and Oswald, is joining us. He's a criminal defense attorney. And, Rob, thanks for joining us. First of all, if you would talk to us a little bit about this issue with um, the contamination, possibly, of the bullet. Sherry Colhane said she was pretty confident that her DNA was not present on the bullet and that only Teresa Hallbuck's DNA was there. But what, okay. what do you have to say about that? Well, they obviously had numerous samples of DNA, and she testified that they uh, tested 180 different items. So this is a pretty complex process. And for the defense, if there's any break in the integrity of that process, I think they obviously have an obligation to jump all over that and to explore that. And you can expect they're going to do that because if there is one part of this process where the integrity breaks down, how can anybody be sure that these other parts of the process didn't have the, a similar type of breakdown? So whether it's the bullet itself or one of the control samples or whatever, I think the credibility of this witness is bolstered by the fact that she helped exonerate Mr. Avery, um, but the fact that mistakes can be made when the stakes are this high in this type of investigation, um, I, I think obviously the defense is going to score a lot of points with that. Okay, it's something we haven't touched on. Uh, the defense has renewed its motion to suppress all of the evidence on the Avery property due to what they call some false statements and affidavits. They said they heard some testimony that this was a missing persons case when they got on the scene. And now they're hearing, uh, or pardon me, that they were investigating a homicide, but everybody's saying, no, we were investigating a missing persons case. Talk to me about what you think about that. Uh, I think that, that it, it's not real sensational type testimony and, and it's a lot of legal argument, mm -hmm. but actually it's very important. I mean, the defense is asking for a lot of evidence to be suppressed. Of course, if that would get suppressed, the state's entire case could potentially mm -hmm. fall apart. So it's very important, it's very crucial. And what the defense has pointed out today is that there may actually be inconsistent testimony. Officers testified one way at a motion hearing under oath and now they're testifying differently mm -hmm. at trial and you know obviously that's very serious allegations. I think the the um, attorney Fallon made his arguments he seemed to be somewhat upset by it because what you're really saying is that you know these these officers are not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Now they term it as inconsistent testimony but that as as a basis to renew their motion to suppress this evidence along with the re reason reasonableness of this, these searches because they're saying that you know these searches were they had some cursory searches and then it blew up into bigger searches but that again they're saying it's inconsistent that you have an affidavit that's inconsistent with testimony and additional testimony that's inconsistent so uh,